Hi everyone, Wonia Tivo here, and I am currently visiting the beautiful off-grid homesteading community that I lived in for many, many years in Northern Oregon. And I'm staying with my friend who's now living in the house that I built, and just wanted to show you a little bit uh, about some of the unique things about the house. Before, I had a smaller house, and I just had a dirt pit that was accessible from the house, but it was really hard to get into and you got really dirty. Um, so I was using that as a root cellar to keep my food cold while living without refrigeration. But when I built the addition to the house, I really wanted to have a root cellar that was accessible from the kitchen while I was in the middle of cooking, if I remembered that I needed something, and that I could get into without having to change clothes or drag a bunch of dirt up. Because my old root cellar was really just a pit in the ground and I got filthy every time I went down in there and squirrels were always getting in there and leaving their chewed up pine cones everywhere and the jars and sometimes the buckets of roots would get covered in dirt. So I really wanted something that was rodent proof and easy to get into and stayed clean. Um, so I put a trap door in the floor of the of the kitchen and built stairs down into a root cellar that I whitewashed to make it more light and clean, mold resistant and rodent proof. So let's take a look at some of that. So the frame itself was logs that were cut in a clear cut of the land right around here that were too small for them to sell for timber. So I went out and harvested the logs from the clear cut and then hired a friend of myself to do the framing. And then once the frame was all built, did the walls using a technique called light straw clay, which is kind of similar to cob, if, you'd, if you've heard of cob. Cob is making, essentially it's like making a pottery house. Creating a mix of clay and sand or gravel and straw for tensile strength, and then you sculpt that essentially into a home. So light straw clay is a little bit different because it's very, very heavy on the straw with just enough clay to hold the straw together when you pack it. So I built this house with clay from the mountainside here itself. So light straw clay is very insulative, whereas cob is a big thermal mass. So it holds and reflects the heat, but it loses heat to the outside. So this north wall of the house, I wanted to have be insulative. So I used the light straw clay. All right, here is a view of the outside of the beautiful home that I built. This is actually in addition to the original cabin that was here, but um, so the light straw clay walls, and then you can't see the poles visible from the outside. Those were only on the inside. So built out from that poles, I did additional pieces of two by fours with, um, with a frame outside, and then I would put two pieces of plywood on either side of that frame, and then stuff that full of the light straw clay mixture, and then pull the plywood off so that it could dry. And then additionally, I used crazy nails, which is basically just funky old nails that you put at a bunch of different angles all inside so that they give that straw something to grip hold of, so they really lock your light straw clay into place. And then afterwards, went over it with several layers of earth plaster. So this was, um, a plaster made of sand and clay slip and very finely shredded straw and we did um, straight clay for some of it and with a white clay for some in order to give the different colors 
and um, I added actually a little bit of wheat paste in there to make it more sticky and also a little bit of borax which helps kill mold which can be an issue when you have straw that doesn't dry for a long time. So this is the beautiful, beautiful clay plastering of this lovely cabin. So one of the fun features of this style of building is that you can put lovely little nooks into the wall. So I built this in as a little altar space and now it has a volcanic lava rock and some lichen and it looks like a turkey feather in here. So lovely little nooks in the wall and here you can see that frame that was from poles from the clear cut and uh, some lovely windows above the sink so you can look out and chat with your neighbors while you're washing dishes and what have you. Here is the kitchen, so nice window here, and um, running water, just cold running water. And when I lived here, actually, I didn't have running water, I just was hauling water, but my friend has put in a nice new sink, which is an awesome addition, but super excited about the nooks that I put in the wall. So the floor here was from an old farmhouse that friends had bought and were tearing apart. So they were just going to be tearing apart and deconstructing the whole floor, but it was beautiful old, old oak floor. It's a tongue and groove oak floor. So we pulled that out and all of the pieces that we managed to get out without any damage, we laid down here and then sanded the whole thing to take the old uh, stain and weird varnish off of the old floor and it made a beautiful kitchen floor and then the door to the root cellar is out of the same. Alright, so this is the entry to the root cellar, stairs going down here, and this is where I was keeping all of my stored roots. So I was doing mostly subsistence farming and also doing some selling at the local farmer's market. So I was growing parsnips and carrots and beets and occasionally rutabagas, but a lot of people don't like rutabagas, so finally I stopped growing them because no one would eat them with me. Um, turnips, potatoes, leeks, garlic, and onions, uh, and, and winter squash as my storage vegetables. So my onions and garlic and winter squash I would store out of the root cellar because they don't like it cold and damp, but the rest of the roots I would pack into tubs packed with damp sawdust and put those down into the root cellar. And then also I kept a lot of my canned goods down in the root cellar. It gets awfully dark down here, so I'll get my headlamp and take a look. It is kind of a narrow stairway so that it would fit the narrow door. So here is, here are the whitewashed walls with vents up there and sealed inexpertly with foam caulking. I know this is totally inadequate light, but it's what we got. And down in here are all of the canned goods and the wine cellar. So here are jars of rabbit stock from all of my years of raising rabbits and canning them down here. So I'm going to grab a jar of rabbit stock and a jar of pulled salmon for my lovely ramen breakfast. All right, so 
So I've got a nice jar of canned rabbit stock and shredded salmon. So the rabbit stock is from butchering rabbits and after I can all of the meat in a pressure cooker, then I cook down the bones for a while, uh, several days usually of boiling to get all of the goodness out of the bones. And then I can up the bone stock in a pressure cooker. And same with salmon. I, When I lived in the Columbia Gorge, I would always buy some salmon from native fishermen and then can a lot of the meat. And then I would cook down the, the bones and the heads and then I'd pull all of the meat off of that and then can a bunch of shredded fish. So this is shredded salmon. And then additionally, I would can the bone stock as well. So everything that I could possibly save, all of the animals and all of that pressure canned and put in jars down in the root cellar for me to enjoy for many years to come. This was uh, canned in 2012, so it's gonna, it's been, it's been <laughs> down there for a long time, and it is time to finish it. So it's gonna make me a delicious ramen soup for my breakfast. So salmon from the Columbia River that I canned, an egg from the chickens here, kale and basil and cilantro from the garden outside carrots from the garden and rabbit stock from rabbits that I raised here. So looks very exciting. Bon appetit, everyone.